Hello again, um, this is Miss Burley TTC and you're watching my channel. Um, I'm talking about cruise, cruising tips for solo cruisers and um, my age range, I'm 29 so I may provide more help for people my age but I'm sure anybody can use my cruise tips. So um, this is just kind of a free spoken video. I got a question for, from a gentleman online, and um, it's from C. Walt Baby um, on Twitter. And his question was, going solo, going on a solo cruise, first time solo cruise, do you enjoy your solo cruises? So this video is going to simply answer that question. I'm going to do kind of like a story. Um, about my experience on my solo cruise in January for 13 days and I have kind of a bullet point to keep me on topic but I don't have like a, a structure for this one I don't have time to make like a list and then make another video I can probably do some more in the future as I cruise more solo um, in the future but right now I just want to get some information out there because it can be kind of anxious you have a lot of anxiety, you make you very anxious to go on a solo cruise by yourself, not knowing what to expect. So uh, we're going to get to it. So let's talk about my social experience, my first solo cruise. Now, I was just kind of done with everything <laughs> in my everyday life. I was exhausted and I just wanted to get away. So cruising is like my oasis away from the chaos that exists in my day to day life. And most of it comes from outside sources like work and then people who just need a lot from me. So um, I'm so, like, I, I go. I wanted to go on a solo cruise to not have to worry about um, any bad cruising companions or people with bad be habits that you just really didn't care for. I wanted to also, I know this might sound crazy, I wanted to like try having the king, not king size bed, you know, when they push both of those um, twin beds together. To, I just wanted to experience that on my own. So I booked this cruise with intentions of not taking anybody. And at one point, there was somebody who wanted to come with me. We booked them on, and they backed out. So just a hint for the future, you guys. Always make your plans for yourself and invite others. And so that way, if they cancel or drop out, you're still going on your plans. Um, you're going on your trip as planned. So um, a quick tip I can give for that instance is, uh, one, if you're going to book a cruise that is longer than um, four days for a solo cruise, I would suggest booking it while you're on another cruise because, or just at least planning it out in, in advance because at that point you get um, onboard credit. I had $200, I believe, just because I booked it on the last cruise. And so that went to, that covered my gratuities and I still had $50 left to spend on myself and I did spend a lot because <laughs> I wanted to have a good time so I saved up I planned I paid out because I booked it a year in advance over a year in advance so I had plenty of time to pay off the cruise um, but yes I, I would suggest if you're gonna go on a long a longer a five day or longer cruise book it and plan it out in advance um, if you're going now, if you're just wanting to run away, you have a feeling like sometimes you just want to run away from stuff in your life. Even if you have a great life and it's everything, you have a positive attitude, sometimes you just need to get the heck away. So book a four day or sh four day or shorter cruise. Now, there are going to be two types of groups on each of those cruises because four day or sh shorter, you're going to go with people who are more rambunctious. Um, <laughs> and I used that word because that's the word someone used when I was on my 13-day cruise because it was an older crowd. 
But um, people who like to, um, you probably have a lot more people who get very drunk and a more wild crowd, I would say, on a shorter cruise. And that can be fine, like, I mean, if you're okay, but do four. If you, if you don't really care for that a lot, do four a day, definitely. But three days or less, you're going to definitely have that kind of crowd. And it's fine depending on what you're looking to do. But um, if you're not really a party person, you just like to engage and interact with people, do, you can do a four-day getaway. And I think that's what his type of cruise was. It's like he said a few days and he's going on Carnival. He's just going to Cosmo. For, oh, he's going on five days. Oh, that's perfect, actually. So he's going to have less of a rambunctious crowd. And so it, it tells you about the demographics of the type of group you're going with. So shorter cruises, you're going to have more younger people who are more um, wild or more free going. I don't know. I don't want to say fun because I had a blast when the cruise I went on with, with older people. I can just kind of go both ways, but I've done both a four day and a 13 day. And I like the 13 day better. So, um, <clears throat> let's see now, um, the social, ex um, a little bit more on the social experience or let me go ahead and finish out the cost well hmm, social experience okay so yes that's it going by yourself you have to think about what kind of social experience you want to have do you want to engage with a more reserved crowd or a more wild crowd and I'm not talking too, too crazy but just you have to think about that if you want a wild crowd for a day or less a reserved crowd five day or more typically the rule now let's bring that into your cost dilemmas um, you're they're going it's going to cost more for you to go on a cruise by yourself mine cost a lot of money but again I have time to plan and save and it was worth every penny just because I enjoyed my own company more than I expected I did and I didn't find myself wanting to hang out with people as much as I did I enjoyed actually doing things by myself or my quiet time but it cost more for that so you have to pay for double occupancy you're only gonna pay one of the port taxes and all the um, room like gratuities are going well it's twelve fifty a day for everybody so that doesn't matter so that's all going to rest on your shoulders so just be prepared for that um, depending on who you uh, have your insurance with you may want to go ahead and do the cruise protection plan if you're not too certain about whether you're going to stick with it or not because the vacation protection is like 50 bucks and if anything happens it'll cover you so that may be good but I, I typically don't do it anymore especially since I have a carnival card now so I just when I book my cruise with the carnival card it covers me for that kind of stuff so it just depends on you know what you're looking for and then you got to think about cost of limits like how are you going to get to the port um, are you going to fly because um, that may be a better option if you're going solo and usually driving is better if you have uh, three or more people because you can divide the cost um, evenly and it's cost much less than three people buying flights um, but you gotta think about that too like in it okay you're going solo I like to, I from my experience I like to cover all my bases so I, I'm a type A planner I planned it so that I flew with Southwest so I could save the most money, but my flight got there the same day. I didn't go the day before, but you might want to consider that depending on where you're flying out or to and how the weather is. Because again, if your flight gets delayed, um, that's on you. So <clears throat> I flew in the same morning. I just flew in real early and I got a cruise transfer with, with this cruise line and um, that cost more, I'm sure, than just getting a cab, whatever. But I wanted to know where I was going, and I didn't want to have to think about any of that stuff just because I didn't have anybody else there with me to figure it out. So I found that to be more convenient. So I got the pay for the transfers um, prior to the cruise actually leaving. And um, so you got to think about that. Um, you got to pay for. I'm trying to think like 
that's about it. Yeah. So just just that, and then your your room. So if you're okay with that, then you should be fine. And depending on like you know, just save your money up, plan it out, space out your money, you'll be fine. And then again, with engaging with people, I didn't have to on the way when I was leaving the cruise. I uh, made a friend with an older lady who kind of took me on as her granddaughter, and she made sure we both got to the airport safely. She paid the um, baggage carriers, porters, um, the tips, and made sure we got on the transfer together and got off. And so that was more convenient for me. And it was just something nice just from interacting with people. So cost dilemmas, that's something to think about. So social experience we talked about, cost dilemmas. Now we're going to talk about some... Um, Pros and cons. Uh, actually, I'm going to skip that to the last part just because I'll save that for anything that I haven't but like I haven't talked about in my separate points. Okay, excursion fillers. You might want to do a, a little bit more excursions on your solo cruise than you would do if you're doing for a group of people. So typically when I have gone on cruises with others, we're trying to not spend as much money as possible. So we didn't um, do any excursions. I think on the first cruise I did, but then it got canceled because of the weather. So we didn't do any excursions on any of the other cur cruises I have went on with other people. Um, and so this was my fifth cruise, and I decided to do excursions at every port. <laughs> and again, that adds up. And I, since I was going by myself, and I was younger and not as experienced um, as a cruiser as most people, I decided to book my cruises directly through the cruise line. And I picked the most cost effective for me and based on what kind of experience I wanted to have. So I've already posted videos of my excursions I did for Cartagena in Colombia and uh, Amber Cove in Dominican Republic. And I recommend those highly. So Cartagena was very affordable. I think it was like 50 bucks or less. Probably 40 bucks or less. And I found about that like the last minute. But it was like a party bus. We just had a blast. Like... It puts you on. I went with that lady that I made a friend with earlier. She booked it with me because we wanted something to do. Um, and they gave you a tour around the city and they give you alcohol and Coke. And it's like a little dance party. You get to go shopping. So that I recommend that one. And then I also did a um, excursion in Dominican Republic for a monkey jungle. And it was so fun. And I don't really consider myself an animal lover until this cruise. And so the little monkeys were just jumping on you and it jumped on top of my head and scared the crap out of me. But they were just so adorable. And so I have pictures of them in that video as well. And I think I'll leave those, I'll put, I'll leave those videos as, um, I think click at the, towards the end of this video, you'll see them as clickable links or whatever. Um, so do your excursions because it'll give you something to do and um, places to give you a place or an environment to meet other people who may be going solo. And I saw a lot of my table mates. Uh, we decided to do some excursions together as well. So that gives you something to do. Um, it's definitely, definitely a way to space out your trip. So mine was 13 days. I think I did excursions at, we had seven ports. I did them at five of the ports. And that's going to add up to my cost, but it helped me to have a much better experience than just <clears throat> walking around by myself and having a potential to get lost. Okay. Um, also, um, for, let's see, we did excursions. I didn't write this down, but you're going to want to do participate in a lot of the events on the ship. Um, so on the ship days, like port, um, sea days is what I want to say. Go to sea day brunch. Let them, and when you're dining, that is the best time to meet people. Let them sit you with people for, say you don't mind sitting with other people for breakfast. That's a great way to have a conversation. You never know who you're going to meet. Um, when you're dining, if for the dinner, you don't really have to worry about it. I say choose, um, if you're more reserved, Choose your time dining. Have a set time when you're going to eat because they'll put you with the same group of people every night. But they are there's a science to how they seat you. They sit you with people who share the same demographics as you. So not race wise, but like if you're a solo cruiser, there's solo cruisers. Um, so for my 13 day cruise, I was with um, 
I think I was with widows, divorcees, or just singles. Every, nobody was married at my table. And they were all older because nobody was my age on my ship. But that was fine. I had a great time. Like it, it create it creates an environment for you to be more relatable to people. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, dinner is usually fine. So if you choose your time dining, um, you're not gonna have the exact same experience because they'll try to seat you with people um similar to your demographics, like or like if they see like one of the first cruises I went on, I was with another lady, so they set us with two men who went on the cruise by themselves. And it was an interesting table, but again, you're going to be seated with different people every night. So if you're more flexible or um, kind of want to meet a different group of people, then you might want to do your time dining. I know while you're on the cruise, you can switch from seated dining to your time. Or I don't know if you can. Maybe you can. I don't think I don't know if you can, but you may be able to just do it once. So um, but there's no going back after that. So that's something to consider. If you do your time dining, if you're um, less reserved, you're more open to meeting people you may like or may not like. It's okay. Just have that one conversation. You never know who you're going to meet. If this looks kind of choppy, I had to add in real quick. So yes, an important thing for solo cruisers, if you're not wanting to, if you're very anxious about having to do stuff by yourself, um, plan your activities in advance before you go on a cruise. I have <laughs> activity lists I kind of type up for myself to keep, make sure I stay engaged throughout the cruise. And it tells me like uh, of things I read a bunch of, I've read through a bunch of blogs and catalogs of all types of tips that regular regular community cruises have posted over years. So I've taken a, a bunch of that and just put it all together. And there's certain days they do like little um, events like tea time where they'll have extra uh, different types of food you can taste. Um, they might do like a midnight buffet if you're on a journeys cruise. So pay attention to like that kind of stuff on um, what they're posting so you can actually participate in it. And um, connect with people before you go on the cruise. I did that for the first trip and I made a friend with a lady. But with Cruise Critic, you can't contact people directly with a message, apparently. So I can never get in contact with her, but I see her up there all the time. So it's kind of annoying, but um, whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, so Facebook, connect with people ahead of time. And um, you don't have to do anybody individual, just a group. They'll say, hey, we're going to meet for a, so a slot pool. That was where we did our first meetup. And at the slot pool, uh, we all put in $20. And it was just for fun. So we all pulled the lever, I think, about three times. And we'll see how much our total was. I think I only lost $10. And that was great. So I got $10 for, you know, I only paid $10 just to hang out with a bunch of people. And I interacted with other ladies who I saw throughout the cruise and hung out with. The casino is pretty awesome. It was my first time going in the casino um, during this cruise. And I actually won $120. I had a great time. Um, so I, I think, you know, you know, cut, limit yourself, bring cash no one to leave but that's a great way just to fill in time um just get a go to like closer to like the non-smoking section i don't know if there's a non-smoker section but i try to just not sit next to smokers basically and um yeah there was a moment there wasn't a moment where i was just like oh man i was wishing i could do something on this cruise because i kind of thought everything through before I got on there and I have like a little list that I make out of different restaurants I want to try because if you schedule your day with breakfast, lunch and dinner, that's going to take up a lot of time in itself. And then you all you have to do is fill it with like one or two activities in between those times. And that's pretty much your cruise. Most you're eating a lot of time. So just don't eat a lot, but eat you'll eat frequently and that'll keep you busy and engaged as well. So Wake up in the morning, go to the gym. You meet meet people. Um, watch sunrise, you'll meet people. Go to um, do excursions, you'll meet people. 
And basically doing anything but just sitting in your room the whole time, you'll meet somebody. But if that's what you want to do, if this is your cruise for you to lay back and um, just sleep away, just you just you it makes you feel good just to get away from your area, then do that. Let this be your cruise. Room service is 24-7. It's free. It's always a good idea to tip. I usually tip a dollar per item, max five, but it, do something. So some pros and cons of solo cruising. Um, I would say don't do, and it just depends on person. For me, again, I wouldn't do a cruise, again, that's over 10 days by myself. Because I think by the 10th day, and that was before we got to Cozumel, which is a frequent destination port. So I was not that was going to be my like spa day on the ship kind of day to save money. But I ended up doing a um, excursion where we volunteered at a orphanage and it was really nice. And so I'm going to do a video about that. I'm still putting it together, um, but I'll post. I recommend that excursion as well because the $70 I paid for it went towards the organization um, completely. And... Um, they provided us with food. I feel like I got a lot more on that or that excursion than any other. So it, they gave us a meal at a nice local restaurant that I will go back to. It was kind of in a house, but it was better than a restaurant I tried earlier in Cozumel. So I recommend that excursion. It's called the Giving Back with Purpose Community Tour in Cozumel. It's cheaper in Dominican Republic, but and I might try it in Dominican Republic next time. But in Cosmo, it's more expensive. But I really, I'm really glad my money went towards that organization. So, um, anyways, um, some pro, some cons of uh, solo cruising. I feel like I went over some of the pros already while just telling my experience. Some cons. You're gonna um, again, it's gonna cost more. It's going to be um, force you to. Um, engage more um, to have interactions and then it's going to force you to come out of your comfort zone which could be a good or bad thing some pros um, again you can really just have the time of your life um, and you can be whoever you want to be you can you know sleep however you want to sleep uh, you can you know leave your cabin how you want it the, for example, they have room service you can utilize every day. I didn't have, I had room service. I probably used them maybe like four times out of my 13 day cruise. I still tip regularly, but I just declined it just because it was just me and I didn't feel like tidying up my room. And that that's what they there can do that. But I really am self conscious for people. Like I don't like them coming to clean up my mess. And I just kind of want to leave like my clothes out if I'm running in between um, activities. So that's um, something to consider. I can't think of anything else. I'll probably make a part two to solo cruising in the future, but um, these are just some of my stories and experiences from the cruise I went on in January. Um, and basically why I wanted to go, I just, again, I wanted to have some time away from um, my environment. I wanted to get away. And I didn't want to go on another cruise with people who would aggravate the crap out of me. Um, <clears throat> and this particular cruise that I, and it choose your uh, destination wisely and uh, where you're going. So you'll actually want to uh, enjoy your cruise. So if you want to stay in your cabin mostly, pick a cheaper, less expensive cruise that you can go to like Key West or Cozumel because those are frequent ports they go to all the time. Um, but for ones that you'll want to engage more, do like a journey's cruise. So I really liked it. We got to go to Grand Turk, um, Dominican Republic, uh, Rotano Bay in Honduras. We did the partial transit of um, the Panama Canal, and that was amazing. I loved it so much. It was, and they did a whole setup with the videos. I'll talk about that in another video. But hopefully that helped you out. Just gave you guys some background information. I don't want to make this video too long, just because I'm about to do one last video um, talking about. I don't know solo cruising. 
something else related to solo cruising. I think there was something else. So I'm trying to see if I answered his question or their question. Did I enjoy? I do enjoy my solo cruises. I think it's great a great place to clear your mind and just uh, relax and not think about anything. And um, just do whatever the heck you want to do. There's plenty of food to eat. There's plenty of uh, many activities to do while you're waiting for the next major one. But um, they have, they use an app now with Carnival. So you can do everything on your phone and you can see what's coming up next. You can do the little sales, walk around the ship, just have the experience. That's the biggest thing you need to know is just have the experience and enjoy yourself. And so um, just to, oh yeah, for Seawalt Baby in particular, I told them I would add extra tips about the two ports, um, the port he was going to. So for Cozumel, um, again, book an excursion, um, whether it's going um, on a, a, a beach or zip, zip line, anything um, like cost effective, or you just want to lounge all day, you can just go... Um, I think they have excursion where they'll take you to the beach, but you're not going to get a lot of time on the beach. Or you can do something where you go to a private island. But um, make it a relaxing time. To, you know, it's not much to do in the port area if you don't book an excursion. Really, it's just a lot of, I mean, I wouldn't buy much of my stuff in the port. I'd walk a little bit outside the port. You go into the actual city with the community, and they're selling stuff at a much uh, lower price than you would pay, pay because Carnival or owns that port. So that would be a tip I might give you. Um, I also might say is um, you can use those white taxi cabs are perfectly fine, safe. Um, if you want to get around, hop in it and just tip them and they'll take you to where you want to go. There's a restaurant in particular, I think you should patron, but they're booked with a and then the camera's going to shake a little bit because I'm trying to pull up my folder to get the name of it. But they book um, with that excursion, giving back community tour. But you may be able, there are p local community people stopping in and eating just regularly um, at that place. It's called Cocasina Ecamina Los Chilengos. And I'll put a picture clip in right now so you can see what it looks like. But this is a good restaurant. They had some, yes, like nice homemade food. And it was cheap. Well, we didn't pay for it. It was included a thing, but it's affordable. The pricing didn't look too bad. And I'll put some pictures and some clips of some of the, the, the food item I had. So it was very uh, satisfying meal, but that's a, I would recommend that for some authentic food. And um, the taxi person may give you a tour in the city, but you can also walk around. Just again, don't be use your common sense. Don't go down too many alleys by yourself. Um, people would always try to sell you stuff. So I would probably if you're going by yourself, just have a book like maybe a tour around the city with uh, a excursion through carnival yeah book an excursion through carnival and just be done with it or take a nice spa day because the spa is cheaper on the ship when you're at the port but that's all i have to say about this if i miss anything or if you have any questions please post them below and i will do a video answering your direct questions but it's better to know what your questions are exactly that way i'll know how to answer them instead of just rambling for about 30 minutes which is easy for me to do. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video and um, I'll see you next time.